Hi, welcome on my channel. Today I show you the Ultimative DX Shortwave Antenna Overview. I have calculated the most common antennas in the calculation program for NEC2. I have to say that most calculations of manufacturers are not calculated with the real ground and they use DBI and not DBD. So they compare the antenna against a an theoretically isotropic radiator. And that doesn't make really sense. In this overview I look only on the values of 15 degrees. In general the angle between approximately 5, 6, 7 degrees and yeah, let's say 30 degrees is relevant for DX. So this value is just in the middle of a good angle for DX. If your ground is not so good the values will change. If you have not a free field and houses are near your antenna this can change the radiation pattern in practice dramatically. So keep in mind the values are just an approach to give you an impression of the reality. In the table you see on the left from the top to the bottom the calculated antennas and from left to right is the feed point height of the antenna as a lambda value. Below these lambda values you can see the height in reality depending on the band. So as an example you can look on the 11 meter CP radio band and read the value of the height in meters. And here we see it, it will be hard to build a tower in a height of 160 meters for a feed point in, lam in one lambda. So depending on the band you need another antenna. And keep in mind you can make great DX contacts with bad antennas if the conditions are really good. But you can be heard loud and clear and you can be the winner in a contest or a pile up if you use the right antenna. Furthermore, every antenna can be optimized for a better SWR or a better forward-backward ratio. I have not done that, so the values can be optimized, especially antennas which consist of more than one element, like beams. In some more videos, I will show you the diagrams which I have rendered with Fornic 2. Here I will just speak about the big differences. And one big difference you can see with the dipole. If the height of the dipole is too low, we speak about a big loss. Vertical antennas, like the vertical dipole, a ground plane or a double leg are nice at the lowest level, but they do not really win this comparison. They are easy to be built up and if you cannot reach a good height, it is okay to use a vertical. The quad antenna is in the middle. In this configuration, with the feed point in the middle, the values are not looking so bad. The Moxon beam is just a Yagi beam with folded legs. Beginning at a height of 30% of the wavelength, the beam works better in a horizontal polarization. With a three element beam, which is not very high, you can be better than all other antennas on this height. But a beam is not needed if your wire is one full wavelength high and you have a good wet ground. So these are the results in a short review. No wonders but very important to understand these parameters. So have fun with ham radio and do not forget to subscribe my channel with some more practical comparisons in the next videos. So 73 bye, thank you very much, bye bye.